Okay. I guess, yeah, or, yeah, I know. I'm just saying that we'll pray for it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. same thing. Amen. Come on. It is. Okay. Amen. Y'all just lift your, yeah, you, you too? There's two of you? All right. Amen. Y'all stretch your hands this way. Come on, Amy. Come here. Lay hands on you, girl. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, man. Come here, Amy. Mm. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that you are here and you are present to heal and that it's your desire, Father, that those who uh, that you spoke it out, you're the one who said it. So, Father, we just thank you that it's your desire to see this um, just bound up and hurled far away from their tent. So we just declare healing over their bodies right now. We thank you that the blood of Jesus washes everything clean, that there is healing uh, in your wings, Lord God, that the wounds that you uh, took upon your back were for our healing, Lord. We thank you that they partake of the bread of life right now, that the healing bread that is uh, in heaven, which is, which is broken for them, that, Father, we just thank you that now by the Holy Spirit, you're releasing that word over them and that they are taking it, they're tasting it, they're chewing it, and they are making it a part of who they are this day. Lord, we just, we just say right now that the intestines, the bowels, the stomach, everything lines up with the word of God and that everything performs and functions naturally and normally, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you cancel every report. And Father, we thank you for immediate breakthrough, Lord, immediate breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> feel like I need to add an addendum to what we've been speaking. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to read. If you do not, if you're part of this church, or if you were thinking about being part of this church, I suggest that you go online and look at um, our word from January the 8th. I believe it was uh, a word of the Lord that He gave me to speak over this body. Um, I felt the nudge of the Lord to speak it again this morning just to, just to declare. I'm not going to preach this. I'm just going to read through it the bullet points that are on my notes. Um, because I think that word is tied with uh, what we've been talking about. And what we've been talking about is a place for you and God. And, and, and not only a place that God has for you, it's not a mansion, we've talked about that, it's not a mansion, but it's a place that you need to occupy, it's a place that you need to abide. See, it's, it's one thing to, to, to know that God wants to bless you it's a, and, and it's one thing to know that God has a place for you. We've got to get to the point where we abide in that place because we get moved out of that place and, and when we get moved out of the place is when we fail or when we fall short or when we miss what God wants to do in our lives. And, 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 and it's because we get moved. We get moved by circumstances. We get moved by situations. We get moved by offense. We get moved by defense. We, got, we get moved by whatever comes along it moves us out of this place. And, and what happens is, is we get, it, it's, it's, it's this way, it's what is this, horizontal? It's horizontally, we get and with people and everything right here, but when that happens, then it moves us vertically. It moves us away from uh, the position that we have heavenly. Uh, circumstances that we see around then causes us to move out of the position, and that position where we're at is the place from where we're at in heaven, that God brings forth. See, this wasn't even in my notes. But that's the place that God's bringing the answer. Because that's the place that you've got to occupy. And there's, I hate this word, all the prophetic guys use it, the portal. It, it sounds kind of new age and all that, but it's a dimension from there to here, and it's a portal, and it's right there, and you cannot step one inch to the other way, or you're not going to receive what God has, because you moved out of position. Amen? 
Ooh, preach came all over me. <clears throat> so we have talked, the, the key to this whole thing is abiding. And, 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 and the, the word that came forth on January 8th uh, is for us to obtain that, we must abide. Okay? Um, so I want to I speak that over to you. And there's conditions. Psalms 2, 7 through 9. We're not going to go there. I'm not going to preach it, but Psalms 2, 7. Re- write that down. Uh, hell has waged war against you. We all know that. Uh, two, you uh, declare God has begotten you. You need to come uh, out of your own mouth and declare God has me. All right? And then ask of him in that you ask of him the heathen. See, we got to understand that everything this does and everything this is about is about somebody that doesn't know him. Your money, your situation, your family, your work, whatever's going on in your life, the whole thing is that is the reproduction process of getting somebody else into the kingdom. Amen? Amen? So whatever goes on, whatever you need, the house, the car, the, 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 the bill paid, the finances, uh, the sickness, whatever that situation is, whatever it is in your life, whatever you're seeking God for, the ultimate result is not to get you what you want, but to get somebody saved. <clears throat> so ask for the heathen, not for your husband, your wife, the heathen. And ask for the earth, the substance in the earth. Not for your gain, but for his gain. See, he wants to give you the substance of the earth to do the bid. It takes money to do what we do. It takes money to put the lights on. It takes money to build the drum cage. It takes money to put the drywall up. It takes money to send the gospel out. It takes money to pay me. It takes money to, to, to pay the other people. It takes money to send people to Mexico. It takes money to send people down the street to wherever the, 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 the crack house is. It takes money to put people there. Amen? So we need to ask for the substance. That's why. Not so we can feel better about ourselves because we're driving a certain certain car or we're living in a certain certain house, but that we may have the provision. And the nice things are uh, the icing on the cake because God loves us so much. Amen? All right. And then, then from there, you go to Matthew 10, 37. Don't value anything more. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to elaborate on that. He says, don't value anything more than him. You have a cross to bear in this. Lay down your life to gain it. It's him, not you, when it starts moving. And receive what the man of God says to you. When I speak it, receive it. Because I'm the means, if you're connected to this body, I'm the means by which he's speaking to you. I'm the mouthpiece. Amen? And so as it's coming forth, I'm confirming or speaking to you something new. In other words, you should be at home studying the Word and seeking God, but when you come here, what I say should confirm what's going on at home. Or I should initiate to you, speak something into you that starts a fire for you to go study at home and confirm at home. Amen? All right. So, the last piece of that is to receive the Word from the man of God. So those are the conditions for the prophetic Word. Isaiah 62. I'm not going to read it, but this is it. For those who are dry... How many has been dry? Amen? Have a new authority given to us by Lord, the Lord. So you've got to have authority to get. So you can't be in a poverty, slave mentality waiting for someone to give something to you. What God wants to do is put an authority into you so you go get what you need. Amen? Whole different concept. The Lord has us in His hand. He has picked us up and He's beginning to move with us. Amen? No longer are we forsaken and desolate. The Lord says, Hephzibah and Beulah, He delights in us and He's married to us. What we produce will stay and keep producing. Watchmen, He is setting us on the wall that we will not hold our peace, that we will not give the Lord rest, continually bringing this promise before Him that it comes about. And our enemy will not no longer take our substance and He will no longer celebrate with our fruit. Amen? Thus saith the Lord. And then he says, go through the gate, go through the gate, prepare, build up, remove obstacles, and lift up a banner. See, the banner rises up and says, declares, this territory, this land is mine. Amen? And the banner's not uh, whoever your name is up there. That banner is Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. 
And then under the subscription is your little name and in the small print, fine print. Amen. But the big name and whose the banner na name is, is Jesus Christ, King of Kings. Amen. Yeah. All right. Whew. I might get excited today. All right. Key word in there as I was going over it is, is value. I looked up value and it's of worth, what's important. The regard that something is held one's judgment of what is important. What is important to you? What is valuable to you? What is of worth to you? See, the Bible tells us that family and friends, mom and dad, sisters and brothers, should not be more important than the king. He tells us that the riches of the land and the treasures of the land should not be more important than the king. Paul says, I have all this education, I have all this ability, but I counted, and, I, and then I've also gone through all these issues and, and all these struggles, and I count them as dung. So all the good and all the bad are nothing compared to the king. We should not value anything more than the king. And I challenge us to really evaluate what we value and where it is on our wrong. What do you value? Do you value a man's opinion? Do you value a man's touch? Do you value substances? Do you value material things? What is the first thing you think about in the morning? What's the last thing you think about when you go to bed? I challenge you, the first thing on your mind and the last thing on your mind is what you value the most. What do you think about all day long? What is the heart of your subject? What do you talk about? What do you value? It's a struggle sometimes because life is life and it gets in the way. But if Jesus came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly, then why are we so concerned about this thing called life? We say life consumes us, work, what, whatever the thing is that consumes us and keeps, keeps us busy. All of that goes and all of that stirs and all of that runs around. But if Jesus came to give us life, then what do we value? What, do, what is of importance? Family, goods, trials, tribulations, homes, lands, riches, pleasures. What do you value? Go with me to John 12, 32. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, give it to me in King James, guys, will draw all peoples to myself. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. No, go back. Jesus says, if I will be elevated. Now, that word earth is soil. It translates as soil. It also translates as the occupants of and the inhabitants of the earth, of the world. What are we, what, what, what does it tell us in Genesis that we're made of? Dirt. Okay. I propose to you this morning that if we will elevate the Word of God above flesh, Jesus, that word <laughs> draw is drag, but it also is receive, pull, bring into 
if we will elevate the Word of God, we will, or Jesus will, because we elevate Him, will receive people, pull people to Him. Okay? So, the point of what I'm trying to get across to you is that if we will value the Word above Now, if if we think about it, everything in the earth is made out of the earth, right? It comes out of the earth. If we will value the Word of God over the earth, we will elevate Him to a place that will cause men to be drawn to Him. In other words, if we elevate Jesus in our lives and put Jesus in the place that He's supposed to be, men will be drawn not to us, but to Jesus. See, what happens is is when you start moving and and you have success and God has blessed you, when you focus on the goods, men are drawn to the goods. See, if you are a good person and you're nice and you give to people and you help people and you do, they're not drawn to Jesus. They're drawn to what you have because you're doing it out of the motive of who you are. If you have the car, the house, all the things, if, if, if you don't lift the word of God above that earth, what happens is they are drawn to you. But if you put Jesus above, they're not drawn to the goods. They're drawn to Jesus. Amen? So God wants us to elevate Jesus above all of our earth that men will be drawn to him. So they won't focus on us. They'll focus on him. And he said, if you'll lift me up, I'll draw him to you. But see, he puts it in the condition. He didn't say, I'll stand up and draw him to you, to me. He didn't say, I'll stand up on a hill. He said, if you will lift me up. If you will lift me up, if you'll lift me up, I'll draw them. If you'll lift me up, I'll draw them. If you put me first, I'll draw them in. Amen? If you'll lift me up, I'll draw them to me. And so you says, well, what does that have to do with us? It has everything to do with us because abiding is not about us. Abiding in the kingdom and abiding in Jesus and knowing who God is, abiding in Him is not about what we can get. Okay, if we can get that past that. See, if you will trust and believe that if you will move on His behalf, He'll take care of your half. If you'll move and do what He says, He'll take care of what you... If you'll go speak to that, uh, that parent, He'll speak to your parents. If you'll, if you'll speak to that kid, He'll speak to your kid. If you'll take care of what He wants you to take care of, He'll take care of what you need taken care of. And so if, if we will allow Him to be elevated, He'll draw all men to Him. And if we will then keep him up there and abide in that, then we will move into a place where we're touching and bringing people into the kingdom. And see, that is what pleases God. Not how well you do in your job, not how well you obtain money, not how well your parents, I mean, your your parenting is, not how well your marriage is. Though those are results of elevating him. He says, seek the kingdom first. And all these things will be added unto you. See, we got it wrong. We're trying to get God to get us to move, get Him to move on what we need. But He said, if you'll focus on what I want, I'll take care of what you need. And we got to abide. We got to stay. Abide means to tolerate, dwell, await, stay, bear, remain, endure. If we elevate the word, we will be taken to or received by him. Go with me to Psalm 16. 11. Give that one into in new living. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Thank you. I'm glad one person liked that. Give it to it in King James again. 
<clears throat> that will show me the path of life in the presence is fullness of joy. At that right hand there, there are pleasures forevermore. God is telling us that He'll show us the path of life in His presence. If I have been talking to you about a place in the living, uh, being occupying a place in, in God and, and staying and abiding that you may stay in that place, then what I'm talking to you about is staying in His presence. And what we need to understand is what it is about His presence. See, His presence, there is the, the path of life and the presence, there's the fullness of joy. In His presence, there are pleasures evermore. No! No, you don't get it! Everybody should be saying amen! Because we don't grab hold of it because we say, no, I don't know, I don't really don't know, i got to work it. I gotta do what I do to get it. I gotta do what I gotta do to get my wife and my 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 family in the right order. I gotta do what I gotta do to get my uh, job in the right order. I gotta do what I gotta do to fix my health. I gotta do what I gotta do to do all these things. I gotta do it in myself. But he says, if you will get in His presence, if you will get in His presence, twenty-five percent of our church knows that. The other 75% are scared to death. Because we know to get into His presence, stuff has to come off. If I wasn't so hot, I would have had my jacket on and other stuff and dropped it off as I was going and, and, and scared y'all that I was going to get naked. But that's what we got to do. Because the bondage of addiction, the bondage of opinion, the bondage of whatever keeps us out of that position. Let's say this light is the portal. Right here is the place or the position that we got to. No matter what's going around us, it's the accusations, the enemy coming, we're being torn down. We are losing this and we're losing that. And this is coming at us. This is still the position that keeps us in the place of being in the presence of the whole side God. This is the place that receives what God has for us. The addiction and the other things steps us over a little bit out of the light. It keeps us, we can be, uh, have a little warmth of the light, we can be close to the light, but we're not in the position. And it's only in His presence that there's the fullness of joy. See, I've got joy, but do I have the fullness? See, i got good times and i got bad times. See, I want to be able to have fullness of joy in the good and in the bad. Because God, who is God, will make me die on the cross. He will cause them to b pull the, the beard. I, uh, if I could grow a beard, he would cause them to pull it out. And he will cause them to spit in my face. He will cause them to pierce me in the side. He will cause them to, to give me lashes in the back. But my circumstances doesn't change. I'm in the joy of the Lord because I'm in the presence of the Most High God. And at his right hand, at his power, there is pleasures evermore. Go with me to Psalm 6, uh, 31, 19. Praise and worship, come on up here. We're going to set a sing, set a fire. Wait till I do this one. When I go to, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Thank you for being, I wish y'all were that obedient all the time. Good Lord, y'all are getting there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. No, no, I know. No, you're working. The others, they, they, y'all are ahead of them. They're, they're slow. Okay, listen, uh, Psalms 31, 19. Oh, how great it is the goodness which thou hast laid us up for them who fear thee. See, reverential fear, it's not fear, oh, I'm scared of you. If it's reverential fear, oh, I honor you, I worship you, I praise you because you can do all and be all. You could wipe me out, but you love me so much. And, and I don't know why you love me so much. And I'll stay right here in the presence. But that fear he that, that has wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Verse 20. 
that shall hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. See, what happens is everything is still coming, but he hides us in his presence. See, it's all out there, but when we know that we're in the presence of God, it doesn't affect us. I don't care what you say about me when I'm in the presence of God, but when I'm outside, it hurts me. It makes me sad, but when I'm in the presence, I know he's got me going. I know he's going to cause victory to come. I know he's going to turn you around. I know he's going to give me victory. I know he's going to set a table before my enemies. Okay, now y'all can come up. Psalms 100. Come up now. Come on. Smart butts. Go, go to Psalm 68 while they're getting ready. I will do that one too. Psalm 68 uh, verse uh, Eight. Listen to this. Come on. The earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. The earth shakes when he's around. Stop, go back. I'll tell you when to go, Bubba. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God. You know what Sinai means? It means thorny. It means those things that prick us. That's just extra. The God of who will rule as God. Your prince, your, your Israel, he's the God of you. And we shake in his presence. Verse 9, Bubba, come on. Thou, God, didst send a plentiful rain. Therefore, thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. Come on, next verse. Thy congregation has dwelt therein. Thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. Verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who published it. Great was those who published it. In other words, those who grabbed hold of it and declared it and allowed it to be in their lives. Amen? Amen? All right, now go with me to Psalms 100. Everybody stand. 100 verse 2. The Lord gave the word... Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before the presence with singing. One, for us to abide, we must stay in that position. And he just told us the way that we come into that presence is by singing, by coming into declaring. We declare in this house this year that we will provoke the presence of the Lord with our voices, not just the 25%, but this whole congregation will come before the Lord and begin to sing, Lord, come. Lord Jesus, come. Have your way in this house. Come on up here. Give and turn the lights off. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come on, Lord. Set a fire down in our souls. My soul and I can't contain, and I can't come on. We're going to let the Holy Spirit have his way. We're no longer going to choke. We're no longer going to hinder. We're no longer going to prevent. And I'm not talking about the leadership. I'm talking about the congregation. We're all going to press in. We're all going to come because we desire for you to have what God has for you. Come on, we're going to push you. We're going to come alongside you and encourage you to allow the presence of God to fill this room. Come on. I want more. Tell him again, set a fire. Come on, if you never come up set to the front, come. Fire down in my soul that I can't Who cares if a man told you? I can't it's the man of God. I want more of you, God. I want more. Oh, come on, keep raising your voice, set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul. I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul. Come on, Lord. Set a fire down in our soul. Come on, Lord.
Come on. Come on, Jake. Yes. Uh, I, I, this is hard for me in that I don't like this done to me. Okay? But if we all went to the doctor and we all had a ailment and the Lord uh, the doctor wrote out a prescription and he said go get this filled and then take it and he tells you how to take it now you may be a person that says I'm not going to take it that way but you would have never went to the doctor okay if you're that type of person so let's just say we all went and, and I I I kind of got a feeling that everybody in here has been to the doctor once and the doctor prescribed something and you took it. I really believe with all my heart that the word of the Lord is for you to come to this altar. And in that, that it's going to start. See, my heart is to get you to the place where you stay in that position and allow the blessings to come. It's not about getting you to do what I tell you to do. Please, miss, don't, don't think that. I'm trying to get you to the position to, re, to receive because uh, it's just my job to deliver it. It's his job to move on your heart, and it's your job to obey him. But I believe that it's the word of the Lord that if you will come, that it will begin to change in your life and that you will begin to learn how to praise him because the word today is we bring or we get into the presence of God by our singing by coming into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. That, that is the way that we invoke that presence, that we are lifting him up. See, when we're singing and praising God, we're lifting up God and keeping him above us. So in that, we're lifting him up, and the word is, come up front. So I ask while we begin to declare this and set a fire, keep it on this one. As we sing this song and we declare it, that you stop thinking about me irritating you and just listen to the God to God and do what he says and watch the difference in your life in the next few weeks come on let's go bring it guys bring it rock it you guys, up, you guys here already come up you guys here already come up come on make a declaration this morning do it make a declaration to it and I can't
You're the great I am. You're the great I am. We put you first, Lord. We put you first. We allow you to have your way. We allow you to have your way. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to you. Come on. Come on. What do you value? Let's value him more than anything. Come on. Come on. Come on, give him your yes. Give him your yes.
singing this, I, I literally smelled the smell of, of like a fire and smoke, and God started talking to me about that and how that when there's a fire, there's a scent, and that scent is recognized by people, and they know what's happening because of the scent that comes out, and then he started speaking to me more, and he showed me about the smoke, and that when there's a fire, the smoke rises, and that you don't, you can be somewhere else and know that there's a fire because of the smoke that you see. We were driving yesterday, and Bill, he's driving, he just said, there's a fire. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, look, it was far off, but there was smoke. We could see the smoke. We couldn't see the flames, but we knew there was a fire because of the smoke. And God's telling us, if I'm cold, I know where I'm going because I see the smoke. I know there's a fire there. And he's saying, are you ready to completely give up and burn? Because one fire, you're going to think, well, what difference can I make? It's one fire. But if I burn, and you burn, and you burn, and you burn, then we come together. And people may not be able to see the fire, but they're going to say, there's smoke. And when there's smoke, there's a fire. And I'm going to go where there's a fire because they have something I need. They may not be able to see it specifically, but they're going to see that you have something they need. So he's saying, don't count yourself short. Don't say, what can I do? Because with you, and with you, and with you, and with you, when we all come together, there's fires that the smoke is seen in outer space because the fires are so big. And he's saying, what can you do with your flame, with the come fire on, inside yes. of you? So let yourself go right now and see what he can do. Yes, 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 yes. Mm, tell on. him this again, and he set me on fire. Come on. Yes. Set me on come fire. Come on, a fire as many embers, and he set me on fire. And I'm burning Every voice. alive Every voice. with his breath in my lungs. I am coming Come on, every voice. And he set me on fire. And I'm burning alive with his breath in my lungs. I am burning. Oh, come on, do it again. Raise it up. And he said.
Let's bow our heads, please. I felt like the Lord said today was a step. My heart's cry was that we would go to the, the finish line today, but I felt like the Lord said, you have taken a step. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. He said, you're moving forward. You're moving forward. Please receive what God's saying to you. Please receive what God's saying to you. Because it's in His presence that there's joy. It's in His presence that there's pleasures evermore. See, you can read the Word. You can hear someone preach. You can see things about Jesus. You can have Jesus acts. But there's nothing that can compare to his presence. See, you can go through the motions. And if you don't have his presence, you don't receive the fullness. So we're going to preach the word, but we're going to crave his presence. Amen? We're going to allow him to have his way in this place. Amen? Dear Heavenly Father, we say yes to whatever you desire. Fill this place with your glory, day in and day out. Take it with us to our homes and to the marketplace. Father, we love you and you pra we praise you. And all God's people said, amen and amen and amen. Love song, somebody tell me glad they were here today. We'll see you Wednesday. Bring somebody Wednesday night. Be blessed.